Joe travelled back to the 80s To the movies he fondly recalled With Annie and Tom Cruise and Sly and Bruce Willis Before he went bald Back when the movies were simple And the plots had no deep commentary Just some hero with biceps and witty one-liners Shooting all he could see but I guess the grass is greener When you're wearing those rose tinted shades But while he's stuck in the eighties Do you want to take these movie lemons And give you lemonade So sit back and relax Just sit back wherever you are For the movie reviews and the science bits too For now you are going to die. Everybody does. Wow. John Carpenter really took his career to a new low with this one. How do you possibly go from making classics such as Halloween, The Thing and The Fog to inane drivel like Escape from L.A.? At least old Kurt Russell seems to be on the joke with us, which is reassuring. He still looks pretty cool, and he hasn't changed at all since Escape from New York, which was made 15 years prior to L.A. Unless you take into consideration his snake tattoo on his belly, which has miraculously changed. I can't even think of a fitting scene to rant about. You know, I could actually make this the shortest shitcase cinema review today, and simply take to go and buy the DVD for yourself. But no, because that might endanger your life. Leave the reviewing of shit films to us. We can take it. Anyone who sat through reviews of Alien vs Predator, Rambo 3, and Jaws the Revenge obviously have mental issues and are immune to giant bags of shit like Escape from LA. A funny thing that gets me with this film is that people call him Pliskin to start with, so then he eventually tells them to call him Snake. Call me Snake. Then once people start calling him Snake, he tells them to call him Pliskin. <laughs> what a funny fucker Kurt Russell is. You got it, Snake. Hey Snake! That looks like Snake Pliskin. Oh, he's the man with the juice, Snake. Snake? Snake! 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 You can't take that back, Snake! I'm Snake! Welcome back, sir. The name's Pliskin. In order to keep this review relatively short, we'll just take a look at ten cringe-worthy moments and then just let you make up your own mind whether you want to invest in this movie or not. The plot. It's basically a remake of Escape from New York with a whole higher level of shitness to it. Snake is captured and has made an offer, which is obviously going to accept, otherwise the film would pretty much end there and then. Get this crap out of me. Oh, Snake, why did you have to accept their offer, you fucking tool? He has to do battle with a bunch of crazy bad guys, make friends with loads of retards who boast stupid names, such as Maps to the Stars Eddie, Hershey, who was previously known to Snake as Car Jack Malone, Utopia, and various others. He has to get back a black box to the president before his countdown clock reaches zero, otherwise he'll get a serious case of the flu with a never-ending runny nose and sore throat. Oscar-winning storyline for sure. <laughs> I told you he was dumb. Che Guevara. Oh, come on, it's bloody obvious. Cuervo Jones is the name he's going by here, but nobody can sit there and tell me he's not trying to be the Cuban revolutionist. Snake on a surfboard. It sounds like a film. A really shit film. Oh, no, wait, that was Snake on a plane. Anyway, this scene is a joke, and it pretty much sums up the entire hour and a half that the film runs for. He rides a fucking tsunami like a professional surfer, despite having only a ten-second verbal lesson from the 60-year-old hippie. He manages to capture maps of the star's edit, who's conveniently driving through the neighborhood at the time in Che Guevara's car. Snake jumps onto the back from his surfboard, and finally takes control of the vehicle after beating ten bells of shit out of poor Eddie. Go Snake! The dialogue. Who came up with the cheesy lines? You slow down, dickhead. I'm the one who's dying. I mean, cool. But I kind of thought you'd be taller. My God, they're real. You gotta smoke. 
Now, if you think back to Escape from New York, we get that wrestling match where Snake's fighting that guy with the baseball bat which has spikes on them and he uh, executes the guy in the back of the head. What do we get in this film? Is it something more exciting? No, it's a lame old basketball game. What? Snake's told he's got to make a certain number of points before the clock gets to zero, otherwise he'll be shot. If he misses a shot, he'll be shot. It's just ridiculous. Naturally, Snake manages to get all the points, so Snake does a runner just conveniently as an earthquake takes place, allowing him to escape. Christ, what a disaster. How in the blue fuck is that helicopter unable to fly away in this scene? No, it's not damaged, nor is it tied up by several heavy-duty grappling hooks, but it is tied up with what looks like a frail piece of rope, which they can only seemingly break with machine gun fire. No, I'm not making this up either, believe it or not. This actually happens. Carjack, we're hooked up on your side. The scene where Snake and his friends are paragliding through the streets of LA is absolutely ridiculous. It's just unconvincing to the extreme. Something like this should be really high tension and take your breath away and get you excited, but it just makes you laugh. I'm surprised you can't see the wires holding them up. They're floating around at about two miles an hour, and the guys on the floor are shooting at them with machine guns, yet they always miss Snake and his friends. Yet Snake and his friends manage to take all these guys out straight away. It makes absolutely no sense, and it's probably one of the funniest moments of the film. Right, let's just stop there, okay? I can't believe we're even seriously talking about this movie. I'd rather do a second review of Super Mario Bros. or even a full-on review of the Graveyard Shift. As I'm sure you can guess, Snake saves the day and decides to shut down the entire world so he doesn't have to return in a third escape outing. So, with that apocalyptic decision from Snake, he does indeed escape, as do we, because the film ends right there. Well, that was fun. Such an amazing piece of cinematic history consisting of great acting, a superb story, mind-blowing special effects, catchy music, and captivating plot twists. Pure magic. 10 out of 10. He shut down the earth.